in programming, uh, I'd like to give you another metaphor as well. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same as like building a car or, or building a house. You have building blocks. Just like in a car, you have an engine, you've got wheels, you've got a steering wheel, you've got these components. Same thing in programming, you've got building blocks. There's four main building blocks in programming, which I'm going to cover. The first being condition. Right? So that's the first building block in programming. You've prob you know, you know a bit of conditions, you know, if condition. Anyone done programming before? Okay, cool. cool. You can talk. You don't have to be silent, all right? <laughs> I'm, not in, I'm not by myself here in the room. So, first one is condition. Now, every time we do a condition, we put a condition in brackets, just like that. So the first one, just like I mentioned, if condition. So you've got if. Let's say, for example, age, I'm going to pop this out, if age is um, less than, say, 18. I'm not going to tell you when we're going to use that condition, but, you know, let your imagination run wild. <laughs> if, you're, if you're less than 18, sorry, buddy, you can't come into the site, yeah? Or, or whatever. So the same thing, so you just put a, if something is true, you put a condition in the middle here, yeah? and then you execute the code. So you could put a statement line, and sorry, you know, print, for example, uh, and then you would put something like, you know, print, sorry, you're too young or something like that. And then, or you would do something like that, like else, if age is greater than 18, do something else. I'm being very quick here just to give you a quick idea, and then we'll sort of like go into the detail of it. So that's the first, first sort of thing is like a condition, an if condition. The second thing, you've got loops. Okay? Now, loops is, is when you, well, computers are really good at, like repeating something a number of times. There's four different types of loops. Maybe there's more, uh, I'll sort of like, try to remember. Am I right, Shane? Something like that. Four, 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 four different loops. First one is the while loop. While is pretty much like a condition as well, so you've got while, you know. I, for example, or X could be anything, is less than 10, you know, keep executing. Now, if it was only one line, you would just put the line here and then you put a semicolon at the end. But if it's a multiple line, like I said, that's a paragraph, you want a block, a block of code, you would start doing these squiggly lines. And then you would do the code down here and you would say, uh, repeat, so you keep saying I plus plus. Now I plus plus basically means I plus one. So what you've got here, you're incrementing I. Now I is what, like I said, is a variable. Now what's a variable? A variable is basically like a box, like Shane was explaining. It's a box that holds something inside it. It holds numbers. It would hold what type of number? It would hold a float number, just like like one pound ninety nine, or it would hold uh, an integer value, which is like one, two, three. So it would hold some sort of value, whether it's numbers or characters, like A, B, C. So we'll define that in the beginning. In most languages, sort of like C, C++, um, Pascal, PHP, uh, not PHP actually, but PHP is just slightly different, and Objective-C as well. Uh, in these three languages, at least in Java, you would need to define what that container will contain, like that I, what it will contain. So we'll need to say something like, oh, int, as for integer, I, and then we'll define that at the top here before we actually go into the while loop, and then we'll start doing the conditions if I is less than 10. But what we'll need to do as well is say I equals zero, so we initialize it. So this is where you initialize the I, so it's zero, and it, every time it just keeps going, adding one to it. Uh, in PHP, who's done PHP before? Yeah, in PHP you don't actually need to um, uh, set a value or, or the data type. You don't need to give it like a data type of integer. You can just like put a dollar in front and put an I. As soon as you put the dollar, it will recognize that's a variable. And that variable can hold pretty much anything. As you put a number in there, it'll say, oh, it's a number in here. If it's characters, it will say, oh, it's putting it in our characters or string or you can put between quotation marks when you're doing a string. Say, oh, this is a, stri a string, it's not a number here. So we'll treat it like a string. But in this case, when we're covering a 
for C, C++ and an objective C, you would need to use these things. Now, the one thing that I forgot to actually mention, which I'm kind of jumped very quickly into, uh, the four building blocks are pretty much the same across all the major languages, as far as I know. I haven't come any uh, across any language that doesn't have these building blocks, at least, right? And that sort of, the, the, these building blocks are common in non-object programming. The difference between non-object and object-oriented programming, the non-objects just cover that, doesn't have any object-oriented concepts, but when you look at um, object-oriented programming, it's pretty much all this plus some objects as well. So we'll go into that shortly as well. Uh, but that's that's the wild bit for you, right? So you've got the condition, and it does something, it keeps incrementing here. 